Hello everyone and welcome back to Popcorn in Bed. Thank you as always for being here. I've got a new popcorn to try. Someone sent this to me. It is Jolly Time Mallow Magic Marshmallow Treat Flavor. Have not tried it yet. You're gonna get this first time reaction. I'm very excited. Hold on. At first bite, it just tastes like regular kettle corn, which I love. I can smell the marshmallow. I can't taste the marshmallow as strong as I want, but there is a little bit more of the mallow aftertaste than regular kettle corn. It's very good, actually. Okay, I'm watching My Cousin Vinny tonight. We did a courtroom poll. The runner-up was My Cousin Vinny. Apparently, this one's very courtroom accurate while also being a comedy. I don't know who's in it. I don't know the case. I don't know the year. I don't know really anything about it other than it's a courtroom and seems to be a fan favorite cult following movie. So I'm really excited to watch it. I think it's gonna be a fun night to just sit in my bed with my popcorn and watch a funny show. Remember, if you wanna take part in these polls, help me find out what I'm watching next, as well as just chat with a movie loving, super kind community. You can join my Patreon here. You also get early access to full length reactions. If you just want to subscribe and like, that is also super helpful. Okay, let's do it. You can't handle the truth. I'm just gonna say, if you don't like sweet things, this is not for you, it's very sweet. I don't mind it. Joe Pesky, Pesky. I recognize that name. My cousin Vinny. I feel so happy. Marissa Tomei, Aunt May. Is that the Karate Kid? Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai. This is getting better the more you do. We should get to So they're going to college, looks like UCLA textbook. Why are they in Alabama? Jesus. I forgot to pay for this. What if somebody saw? The laws are medieval down here. You know what the minimum age for execution is in Alabama? 16? 10. <laughs> There's a cop behind us. There's nothing to worry about, right? There might be. I get the exact same way when a cop is behind me. I automatically feel like I'm a criminal. Uh oh, come on. There's lights are on. Is this about the tuna? Might be a tail light or something. Just relax. This is not about the tuna. Hello. Show me your hands. Jesus. All this over a can of tuna. Is this really about the tuna? I don't think this is about the tuna. I gotta take this away from myself. Sorry, it was a stupid thing to do. Y'all sign a statement or whatever makes this whole thing easier. Oh no. Good. Stan, he had nothing to do with it. Did he help you plan it? It wasn't planned out, you know, it just happened. Oh no. Did Stan try to stop you at any time? No. Are you guys kidding? An accessory? I didn't help, I didn't plan it. Oh my gosh. This is gonna be like the ultimate miscommunication. I'm not gonna be able to handle it. Found out later in the car. Why don't you get out? Call the police then. He's my friend. Someone please say can of tuna. What's gonna happen to Bill? We're gonna run enough electricity through him to light up Birmingham. Then I forgot about the can of tuna fish and then we left. When did you shoot him? At what point did you shoot the clerk? I shot the clerk. Yes, when did you shoot him? I shot the clerk. We need you out here? I'm in the middle of a damn confession here. Whoa, wait a minute. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Ma, please, first of all, we didn't do it. Murder. Ma, please, Ma, oh Ma, it's a mistake, all right? We think they're trying to set us up. You know how corrupt it is down here? The clan's here, they're in bread, they sleep with their sisters. Oh boy. Some of them do. How much would an attorney cost? Fifty, a hundred thousand dollars? No, why don't you just tell him? That's a great idea. You think he'll do it? We got an attorney in the family. Great, who? My cousin Vinny. <laughs> Two things that give me anxiety, miscommunications like this, when like the audience is just screaming like, no, and being wrongfully accused of something. So I know this is a comedy, but it's gonna be a tough one. What? You stick out like a sore thumb around here. Me? What about you? At least I'm wearing cowboy boots. That's the guy from Home Alone. That the Chinese food here is terrible. It feels like the wheels went out of balance right after we hit that mud. What's the problem? Probably shimmy in our highway a little bit. You got mud in your tires. You ever hear that? No. She knows everything about cars. <laughs> now see, down here, everybody gets stuck in the mud every now and then. We're famous for our mud. Famous for your mud? How's your Chinese food? Keep on asking about Chinese food. Gotta let everybody know you're a tourist. What are you, a f 
fucking world travel? That's her. That's Aunt May. Oh my gosh, she looks so different. I did not even recognize her. I'll tell you what's condemned this morning. We bringing you all out to the state corrections facility. They don't look concerned enough. This is gonna go on their records. You know what happens in these places? Sometimes there's a big guy named Bubba. He'll protect you. Then you have to become a sex slave and do whatever he wants. Don't worry, my cousin Vinny. Here. We got somebody for you. Hey, you sleeping, huh? Maybe I just start with you. Let him sleep a little bit. Oh my gosh. I don't wanna do this. I don't blame you. Let's try our best to make it a simple in and out procedure. Oh my gosh! True with miscommunication. You. I don't want to do this. It's either me or them. You're getting fucked one way or the other. I think a modicum of gratitude would not be out of line here. It's your ass, not mine. Oh my gosh. I think you should be down on your fucking knees. <laughs> this is too much. Any bag of donuts? How are you? Had any murder cases before? This would be my first. What kind of cases have you had? Well, up till now, personal injury. Personal injury trials. Like the billboards. I haven't had to go to court yet. How long have you been practicing? Almost six weeks. You graduated from law school six years ago. What have you been doing since? Studying for the bar. For six years. Six years? I didn't pass my first time out. You probably passed the second time. I'm afraid not. Three times a charm? Not for me, it isn't. <laughs> nope. Six times was a charm. Oh, boy. Where'd you go to law school? Brooklyn Academy of Law. How long have you been practicing? Almost 16 years. Any murder cases? Quite a few, yes. What was that? You know, win some, lose some. Is he allowed to do this? You being from New York and all might have the impression that law is practiced with a certain degree of informality down here. Oh boy. It isn't. When it comes to procedure, I'm not a patient man. Letter of the law. You would know the letter of the law. Oh. I'll react harshly when you don't. I expect you know this information when you come into my courtroom. Just this? <laughs> One more bite. Can you imagine? Y'all want some? Breakfast? Uh, good choice. Two. <laughs> What's that? You never heard of grits? <laughs> I heard of grits. I used to actually never seen a grit before. I don't think I have either. What is a grit anyways? Made out of corn. Sell it in water for 15 or 20 minutes and add butter. Sounds like popcorn. <laughs> I think I should try grits. Talk to Vinny enough about the case, the miscommunication. Hey. The court of Beecham County is now in session. I feel stressed. Your clients are charged with first degree murder, how they plead. My Don't client. talk to me sitting in that chair. Oh my. I'm <clears throat> sorry. What are you wearing? Clothes. I don't get the question. When you come into my court looking like you do, you insult the integrity of this court. He's wearing a button up. Next time you come into my courtroom, you will look loyally. Oh boy, this kind of self righteous guy is, is scary. How do your clients plead? My clients thought they were getting arrested for shoplifting a can of tuna. What are you telling me? They plead not guilty? No, I'm just trying to explain. Mr. Gambini. I'm stressed. There are only two ways to answer it guilty or not guilty. My clients didn't do anything. I'm not about to revamp the entire judicial process because you find yourself defending clients who say they didn't do it. Next words out of your mouth are either going to be guilty or not guilty. If I hear anything other than guilty or not guilty, a little condescending to say the least. Contempt. I don't even want to hear you clear your throat. A little bit on a power trip. How do your clients plead? I think I get the point. No, I don't think you do. You're now in contempt of court. Not guilty. Thank you. Bail will be set at two hundred thousand dollars. Please take Mr. Gambini into custody. That judge was kind of a jerk. No! I'm gonna nuke this guy Norton this weekend. You screw up and those boys get fried. So you think you know what you're doing? Because you didn't look like you knew what you were doing today in that courtroom. It's a lot of procedure, that's all. Didn't they teach that in law school? The firm that hires you, they teach you procedures. But it ain't no big deal. Just their life and a judge who is on a severe power trip. Keep bailing me out. I already cashed in half the traveler's checks. I tried hustling the money, but I got stiff. Well, what do you mean you got stiff? What does that mean? Oh, gosh. I believe you and Lisa played a game of pool for $200. I'm here to collect. How about if I just kick your ass? We lawyers call that a counter offer. Let me see. This is a tough decision. You think I'll just go with the 200 <laughs> <laughs> Over my dead body. You like to renegotiate as you go along, huh? Here's my counter offer. What if I was just to kick the ever-loving 
shit out of you. His confidence is amazing. He's half his size. If you kick the shit out of me, then you get the money. What happened? We rented? No, I fell. Oh. We gonna fight now? First, let me see the money. I can get it. All right, get it. Then we'll fight. Could you fall in your place or somebody else's? <laughs> it's a personal injury. <laughs> All we had to do was say guilty or not guilty. And I don't want to fire him. He's family. My mother, the way I health is right now. Wouldn't your mother be more upset if you die? You have to see the Gambinis in action. These people, the they love to action. argue. I want you to last one to use the bathroom. Yeah. Why don't you turn it off? I did turn it off. If you turned it off, why am I listening to it? Maybe it's broken. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> he does love to argue. Maybe you didn't twist it hard enough. I twisted it just right. How could you be so sure? This particular model faucet requires 10 to 16 foot pounds of torque. I used a Craftsman model 1019 torque wrench. Is she helping him practice? How could you be sure that's accurate? It had been calibrated to be dead on balls accurate. <sighs> dead on balls accurate? It's an industry term. She's good. I guess the fucking thing is broken. We gotta move. Then I heard two loud bangs and saw two young men run out from the sack of suds and jump into a green car. Why is she lying? They sitting right there. I was making my breakfast, saw them two boys go into the store. Then later I heard a gunshot. They was running out, got into the car. Why are they doing this? They peeled away. Car was all over the road. Thank you, sir. He said, I shot the clerk. No, I shot the clerk, question mark. I'm setting this matter for trial this Monday. Mr. Gambini, stand up. <laughs> and I'll tell you the next time you appear in my courtroom that you dress appropriately. <laughs> you were serious about that? <laughs> About to f up a little. A little? You're my fiance. I was wondering what their arrangement was. Encourage me a little bit. I love it. That's what you want? Time. Yeah. Oh, you're a smooth talker. You are. You are. I think it's time to collect some evidence, find the real perps. I'm really scared. You should be. Michael win the case. I already got myself sent to jail twice. You know what I think? I think that once you're out there and you're doing your thing out there, I think you're going to be really great. Behind his confidence, he's scared. But also, maybe let's turn it over. You don't f up to someone else, perhaps. <laughs> what is it? Hey, Billy. Come on. He wants to go with the public defender. I'm, I'm going with the public defender, too. Are you scared? Yeah, I'm scared. I'm scared, too. I could do it. The DA's got to build a case. Building a case is like building a house. He loves an analogy. He's going to show you the bricks. He got straight sides, the right shape. He showed them to you in a very special way. His whole case is an illusion. It has to be an illusion, because you're innocent. <gasps> Nobody. How would he do that? Calls the wool over the eyes of a Gambini. Let me question the first witness. How can it hurt? He gets still things up. Oh, Stan's losing it. And my cousin Ruthie's what? Alakazam? The magician with the ponytail? Every time he made something disappear, Vinny jumped on it. It's in his pocket. And there's a spring around it. It pops it open when it's inside the tube. <laughs> it was Alakazam's worst nightmare. He was just being the quintessential Gambini. Gambini. I believe. Big risk. Oh. It goes the quintessential Norton. $200. How do I know that's not a bunch of ones with a 20 wrapped around it? Fan it out. Show it to me. <laughs> They're a sweet couple, actually. Does that freight train come through at 5 a.m. every morning? No, sir. It's very unusual. I was making a lot of money. But my clients were guilty as hell. My conscience What's got What's he kept. from? How about you? I got a bullshit traffic ticket. Got the cop on the stand, and I argued with him until he admitted he was wrong. The judge, Judge Malloy, says to me, you'd be a good litigator. Judge Malloy was from Brooklyn, too. He did it. All of a sudden, it seemed possible. Oh, I'm just... so at the Hey, what are you doing this afternoon? You going hunting? If he let me look at his files. What is getting to try his files have anything to do with hunting? So that I can finesse a little information out of him. What about these pants I got on? Imagine you're a deer. You're prancing along. Oh. You get thirsty. You put your little deer lips down to the cool, clear water. Bam! A fucking bullet rips off part of your head. Would you give a fuck what kind of pants the son of a bitch who shot you was wearing? <laughs> Maybe she should be a lawyer. I sure like they're gonna look in your files. Can you Xerox all the files on the case from Mr. Gambini? Thanks, Is he sweetheart. playing him? <laughs>
What is all that? files, all of them. That's very impressive, Vanessa. Do me a favor, okay? Don't read this book, okay? Do you wonder why Trotta gave you his files? I told you. He has to. It's called disclosure, you dickhead. <laughs> he has to show you everything, otherwise it could be a mistrial. <laughs> you can talk to all his witnesses. He's not allowed any surprises. Didn't teach you that in law school either? <laughs> She's gonna save their butts. How many different levels of thickness have you gone through? What'd you have for breakfast? He's got his girlfriend's camera. It's very unusual. Look at him. Yesterday in his you face told suit. me that freight train hardly ever comes through here at 5 a.m. in the morning. She's supposed to come through at 10 after 4. I just got a fax from the New York State office. They have no record. Oh boy. Of any Vincent Gambini ever trying any case. Twenty years ago, I became an actor. There was this very prominent stage actor, Vincent Gambini. I had to change my name. What name is that? Jerry Gallo. And what name did you tell him? Jerry Gallo. The big attorney. His name was in the papers all last week. Why is that? Because he's dead. Uh oh, SpaghettiO. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Let her help. I am in the dark here with all this legal crap. All I know is you're screwing up and I can't help. And? We agreed to get married as soon as you won your first case. Ten years later, my niece is getting married. My biological clock is ticking like this. And the way this case is going, I ain't never getting married. Ten years? I got a judge that's just aching to throw me in jail. An idiot who wants to fight me for $200. I got no money, a dress code problem, and a little murder case which holds the lives of two innocent kids. Not to mention your biological <laughs> clock, my career. <laughs> Your life, what else can we pile on to the top of the outcome of this case? Maybe it was a bad time to bring it up. Stop it. Your biological clock. Something's gonna happen. What the <laughs> fuck is it? <laughs> oh. This is very romantic. Under the stars, all around for miles. I don't see no stars. Of course. Oh. Oh, poor guy. They gotta put some earplugs in. Oh my. We're not off to a great start this morning. What was in that pink plastic thing in the trunk? It's your suit. I had it clean. I thought it'd be a nice surprise. Go in there with a nice clean suit. I got you $200. <laughs> <He's> like... <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Body slam move. Closed for flu. Oh no, no, no. This is one and only shot. <laughs> What's it gonna be? <laughs> <laughs> Are you mocking me? I'm not mocking you, Judge. Then explain that outfit. I bought a suit. Now it's covered in mud. This town doesn't have a one-hour cleaner. The only store you could buy a new suit in, the whole store got the flu. <laughs> the so store. I gotta get this in a second-hand store for you. For you. I'm holding you in contempt of court. It is a fucking surprise. What'd you say? What'd I say? What? Let's call the first witness. I need to see Vinny in action. At 9.30 in the morning of January 4th, both defendants were seen getting out of their 1964 Buick Skylark convertible, entering the Sack and Suds convenience store. The gunshot was heard by three eyewitnesses and driving off in great haste. This guy is bugging me. I just don't understand about the witnesses. We're going to be asking you to return a verdict of murder in the first degree for William Gambini and a verdict of accessory for Stanley Rothenstein for helping Gambini commit this hyenas crime. Hyenas? Counselor, you wish to make an open statement? Oh. It's time to make you open a statement. Come on, Vin. Come on, Vin. Everything that guy just said is bullshit. Objection, Your Honor. Counsel's entire opening statement is argument. Sustained. Nuts. Counselor, your statement, sir. This should be interesting. Ladies and gentlemen of the <laughs> jury, um. Uh, uh. Oh, no. We intend to prove the. Prosecution's case is circumstantial. I can't handle this. They're screwed. 
Oh my gosh. I get a little nervous. A little there. nervous. I'm getting better. I heard a gunshot. He doesn't have a stutter. So he was just nervous. I looked out the window. Them two boys. How much are they paying you? I see you wear eyeglasses. Were you wearing them that day? No. Yes, you see. You were 50 feet away. And, 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 and yet yeah, you were not wearing your necessary eyeglasses. they reading glasses. This is so uncomfortable. Could you tell the court what color eyes the defendants had? Hazel green. No more questions. <sighs> Mr. Gambini. Come on, Mr. Gambini. <sighs> He's a tough one. Yes. The two Utes. Two what? What was that word? Did you say Utes? Yeah, two Utes. What is a Ute? Excuse me, Your Honor. Utes. Your Honor. Is it possible the two defendants enter the store, leave, then two different men go in, shoot the clerk, and then leave? They didn't have enough time. How much time was they in the store? Five minutes. You had just begun to make breakfast, so obviously it takes you five minutes to make breakfast. Do you remember what you had? Eggs and grits. I like grits, too. Instant grits? No self-respect and suddenly uses instant grits. Takes more than five minutes. How could it take you five minutes when it takes the entire grit-eating world 20 minutes. I'm a fast cook, I guess. Boiling water soaks into a grit faster in your kitchen <laughs> than on any place on the face of the earth with these magic grits? Objection, Your Honor. Sustain. Are you sure about that five minutes? Ignore the question. Are you sure about that five minutes? Did you order the red? I may have been mistaken. I got no more use for this guy. That smile? I want him. I'll find a way to bail you out. I'm gonna stay in prison tonight. Maybe I'll finally get some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> what are these pictures of? My house and stuff. Oh, the camera pictures. What is this stuff on the windows? Dirt. What is this thing over your window? It's a screen. And what are these big things right in the middle of your view? He is in his element now, ladies and gentlemen. Trees? Don't be afraid to shout them right out. What are these thousands of little things that are on trees? Leaves. And these bushy things between the trees? Bushes. Is it possible you just saw two guys in a green convertible? I suppose. I'm finished with this guy. I got no use for this guy. When you saw the defendants, were you wearing your glasses? Yes, I was. Over here, dear. Would you mind putting your glasses on for us, please? Whoa, have they always been that thick? They got thick and over the years. Please do a reading test right now. How far were the defendants from you? A hundred feet. Would you hold this, please? Fifty feet, half the distance. How many fingers am I holding up? Let the record show that counselor's holding up two fingers. <laughs> Your Honor, please. Sorry. Mrs. Riley, and only Mrs. Riley. <laughs> Boom. Boom. The court rumbles. Thinking of getting thicker glasses. I really just love that high five. I got a little surprise for you tomorrow. You know you have to disclose all your evidence to me. I'll disclose the first thing in the morning. Judge gonna have to admit it. Should I be worried? I sure would be if I were you. Honey, where did you read about all that disclosure? Why? Because that guy's I'm the special scam. automotive instructor of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. We object to this witness. We've been given no prior notice he'd testify so that we could properly prepare for cross examination, as well as the witness's reports reviewed by a defense expert who might then contradict the veracity of his conclusions. That is a lucid, well thought out objection. Overruled. Why? The car leaving the convenience store left the residue of rubber on the asphalt. Took a sample of that rubber. Took a sample from the rear tires of the defendant's Buick. The chemical composition was found to be identical. How the hell were they doing this? Identical. Okay, Mr. Drama. That doesn't make it true. I just faxed the clerk of New York and asked him what he knew about Jerry Gallo. Jerry Gallo's dead. I'm aware of that. I'm Jerry Callo. C A L L O. <laughs> All right. This is Judge Chamberlain Hallam. Can I speak to the clerk? Oh, boy. You can call back after three. Stay of execution. Unless by some miracle you win this case in the next 90 minutes. Dave's barbecue and seafood. I love her. I've decided. Uh, the pitch is back. Can I help? Oh, you can't help. I wish you could, but you can't. Look how you're looking at me. Okay, you know. we will use your picture. Here's one of me from behind. And I didn't think I could feel worse than I did a couple of seconds ago. Oh. Thank you. Here's a good one of the tire marks. Can we get any farther away? You got it, honey. The taste cracker. Oh, I thought he was serious for a second. That's it. That is it. Lisa. That was too far, Jerry. Pete, you're not you when you're hungry. 
Can I have a five minute recess? Three minutes. He's got something. He's got the smoking gun, right? Please, Trace, this. Not my job. I only have three minutes. Please, just leave me alone! The defense calls as its first witness, Mona Lisa Vito. Your Honor, would you please instruct the bailiff Officer. to escort Ms. Vito to the witness stand? Look at the innocent boys. Hold up your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole <laughs> truth, and nothing but the truth? Yeah. Yeah. You're supposed to be some kind of expert. Is that correct? Do you please answer the counselor's question? No, I hate him. May I have permission to treat Miss Vito as a hostile witness? You think I'm hostile? Now wait till you see me tonight. You two know each other? She's my fiance. Certainly explain the hostility. Your Honor, I object to this witness. I'd like to wire dear the extent of her expertise. Granted. What's your current profession? I'm an out-of-work hairdresser. Have you ever worked as a mechanic? My father's garage, yeah. What you do in your father's garage? Tune-ups, engine rebuild. Does being an ex-mechanic qualify you as being expert on tire marks? No. Goodbye. Sit down and stay there until you're told to leave. Ms. Vito's expertise is in general automotive knowledge. All right. What would the correct ignition timing be on a 1955 Bel Air? Does he know the answer to that question? It's impossible to answer. Because you don't know the answer. It is a trick question. Watch this. The 327 didn't come out till 62. And it wasn't offered in the Bel Air till 64. However, in 1964, the correct ignition timing would be four degrees before top dead center. Well. <laughs> Oh. His smile when he does something right kills me. She's acceptable, Your Honor. Did you take this picture? You know I did. It has been argued by me, the defense, that two sets of guys met up at the sack of suds driving identical convertibles. Can you tell us if the defense's case holds water? No, the defense is wrong. Are you sure? I'm positive. This is like their foreplay. These marks were made by a 1963 Pontiac Tempest. This is your opinion? It's a fact. Would you like me to explain? I would love to hear this. Oh, so he's the on the table. That these equal length tire marks had positive traction, which distributes power equally to both the right and left tires. Is that it? No, there's more. There were only two other cars that had positive traction and enough power to make these marks. The Corvette which could never be confused with the Buick Skylark. The other had the same body length, height, width, what? weight. She's doing it. The 1963 Pontiac Tempest. Thank you, Ms. Vito. You've been a lovely, lovely witness. You can stand down. Did you like Ms. Vito's testimony? Very impressive. She's cute too, huh? Very. <laughs> Would you say everything Ms. Oh, yeah, Vito said this. on the stand was 100% accurate? I'd have to say that. Don't be mad or sad. Innocent boys are getting... Yana, I call Sheriff Farley. This is so good. What'd you find out? On a hunch, I took it upon myself to check out if there was any information on a Pontiac Tempest. Two boys were arrested two days ago in Jasper County, Georgia, driving a stolen Pontiac Tempest. They weren't conspirating. A 357 Magnum revolver was found in their possession. Oh. The defense rests. The defense rests. Mr. Potter? It's okay. It's okay to lose because innocents go free. The state like dismiss all charges. Yeah. <laughs> They're having a baby. They're getting married. <sighs> I seriously have chills. I have to get out of here by three. I just want to say thank you. You're welcome. I hope we can do it again soon. Fine job, Mr. Gambini. Come back and see us anytime now. Oh, that's why he has to get away fast. Run! I want you to know you got an open invitation anytime you want to come down here. If I don't get out of here now, I might never be able to leave. Mr. Gambini! <laughs> I owe you an apology, sir. You're one hell of a trial lawyer. Jerry Kelly. You're one hell of a judge. Oh, sorry. <laughs> What the hell was that all about back then? I had a friend send a fax to the judge. What friends you got in the clerk's office? You're from Judge Malloy. So what's your problem? My problem that is was real. I wanted to win my first case without any help from anybody. Oh my God, what a f nightmare! Marry her! I won my first case, you know what this means. I think I'm gonna marry you. You're not gonna marry me now? You can't win a case by yourself, you f***ing <laughs> <are> useless. <laughs> I thought we'd get married this weekend. You don't get it, do you? I want a wedding in church with bridesmaids. Spontaneous is romantic. A burp is spontaneous. A burp is not romantic. I loved that one. Oh my gosh, the more I'm thinking about it, the funnier it gets. When he comes into the jail cell and Billy's sleeping and <laughs> just like 
The cleverness of that exchange to make it make perfect sense. Oh my gosh. And then like the whole waking up in the morning, that's like cliche, but for some reason they made it so funny. Not to mention the courtroom like bam with the smoking gun scene. Oh, it just felt good. I did not have faith in a comedy courtroom, but I got the best of both worlds. I thought it was so smart. Funny. I could not take that guy seriously at the beginning because I just kept thinking about him as the guy from Home Alone. But his timing, his smiles, his mannerisms were hysterical to me by the end. And Aunt May, Marissa Tomei, Tommy, Tom, she was so good, so good. I loved her. And they were like this unlikely couple, but amazing together. It was just really, really, a good time to watch that movie. I feel like that's one that if it's on TV, you're not gonna turn off. It's one that you can watch again. Thank you so much for watching that along with me. I'm really glad that was what I got to watch tonight. So thank you again and have a wonderful night. I'll see you next time.